Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Leah Fronte. And here's your news now. Governor Tom Corbett has signed into law a bill that bans texting while driving. Act 98 makes texting a primary offense, meaning that a police officer can pull you over. The new law will take effect March 8th, and each violation will result in a $50 fine, although no points will be added to your record. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Leah for your trip across the nation. Thanks, Allie. Zuccotti Park was cleared earlier this week as a New York judge upheld City Hall's decision to evict the protesters. Over 70 arrests were made during the eviction, with no injuries were reported. The park has been sanitized and protesters are welcome back as long as they do not bring camping supplies. Jerry Sandusky, former Penn State assistant coach, accused of having sex with young boys he met through his charity, has proclaimed his innocence. He was arrested late last week and has been released on a $100,000 bail. Although he admits to having showered and horsed around with young boys, he claims he is not a pedophile. A balanced budget amendment is headed to the House of Representatives for a vote later this week. The amendment, sponsored by Robert Galate, would require Congress not to spend more than it receives in revenue, unless three-fifths of both the House and Senate vote to do so. The White House strongly opposes the amendment because it would force cuts and raise taxes. The Supreme Court is set to hear arguments on the constitutional of President Obama's health care law. Opponents of the law say the individual mandate to purchase insurance is an overreach of federal power. The court expects to rule on the case by June 2012, only four months before the presidential election. And that was your trip across the nation, and now let's go around the world with Ali. Thanks, Leah. Turkey stepped up its pressure on neighboring Syria over the restriction on protests by the government. The Turkish Prime Minister believes the future should not be built on the blood of the oppressed. The United Nations says more than 3,500 people have been killed since the start of the protest against President Assad. French President Nicolas Sarkozy is looking for a way to end welfare fraud and rethinks how the system is financed in order to ease the burden on employers. The system loses more than a 20 billion euros each year because of fraud. One way to ease the burden is to create a social value added tax which would act as a national sales tax. Welfare has become a major issue with the upcoming election in April. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for your tech connection. This past weekend, Apple announced a replacement program for select first-generation iPod Nanos due to overheating batteries. In fact, Apple recommends that users stop using the affected first-generation Nanos immediately and fill out a claim form on their website to order a replacement unit free of charge. The affected Nanos were sold between September 2005 and December 2006. Apple said that affected devices will be replaced within six weeks and will carry 90-day warranties. A scientist at the University of Texas at Dallas has created his own invisibility cloak, sort of. He heated up carbon nanotubes to the point where they bend light around the object. Dr. Al Alivi has developed a way to make something appear as if it has disappeared. Although the method of invisibility is limited to the lab for now, the military has expressed interest in the technology for hiding tanks and vital equipment on the battlefield if the technology can be developed. That's all I have for now. Stay plugged in right here for the latest tech news. Now back to Outlay and Alley. Thanks, Jimmy. Now let's check in with Danielle for this week's Tip of the Week. Thanks, Leah. With Thanksgiving next week, it's time to break out those aprons and baking pans to prepare for those big family dinners and parties. With all of the party hopping this holiday season, one may be concerned about all of the delicious food leading towards unwanted hol holiday weight gain. Here are a few tips to help you stay fit this holiday season. First, volunteer to bring some type of food or dish to the party. That way, you can whip up something healthy that no one will feel guilty eating. Second, try to focus on all the people at the party who you may not have seen in a while. That will help keep your mind off of all the food that is probably placed everywhere in the room. You could also try going to these parties with a friend who has the same mindset. That way, both of you could keep each other in check. Those are your helpful tips of the week. Back to you, Allie and Leah. It's always difficult to survive Thanksgiving with family. Let's check in with Greg to find out survival tips. What's up, Cabrini College? I'm Greg Stevens for Location. Now let's take a look at a couple hints for Thanksgiving. The first tip is clothing. It's important to wear the right clothing for Thanksgiving Day. To start off, wear a nice pair of jeans. You can't go wrong with a nice pair of jeans, and they're comfortable and look great. 
Next, start with the shirt. This shirt and tie does look great. However, it may not be the most comfortable thing. It is important to look nice during Thanksgiving, but you want to be comfortable, especially after eating a big meal. So let's try this instead. This looks great. No tie, so you'll be comfortable, and it's a nice pinstripe shirt. This is a great outfit to wear for Thanksgiving. But if you want, you could try this, a nice sweater. The sweater looks nice, or you can go with a classic polo. No matter what you wear though, it's important to remember to look good and be comfortable in what you're wearing. Our second tip is on seating. It's important to have the right seat for Thanksgiving dinner. Taking this classic eight top for example, we're going to show you what seats you want to have. We number the seats one through eight. Seats five through eight are all eliminated right away. They're eliminated for different reasons. Seats five and eight are at the end, so it may be a little difficult to get in the conversation. Also, seats six and seven are eliminated because there's a table behind it, so it'll be difficult to get out since you're in the middle and there's a table behind you. Seats one through four, however, are all acceptable seats. If you are more talkative, maybe you want seats three and four, because you can be in the conversation, and since there's not a table behind you, you can get out. Seats one and four, if you're not into a big talkative mood and just want to focus on eating, are more your style. Seats one and four are at the end, so you can get out on either side without interrupting anybody and able to leave at your disposal. Our final tip is your bed. Be sure before you leave or wherever you go for Thanksgiving that your bed is ready for you to return home tonight. After a big meal, you're most likely to get tired and you're going to want a good night's sleep. I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving tips. I'm Greg Stevens for Location. Back to you at the news desk. According to Phil Abundance, one in six Americans struggle with hunger. Let's take a look at how you can help out some less fortunate this year on Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving, uh, a lot of families in underprivileged families have to make the choice between uh, paying their electric bill, paying school tuition, buying clothes for their kids, saving up for Christmas, or having a whole Thanksgiving meal. So um, a lot of families are going to places like Catholic Social Services in Norristown or the Salvation Army um, and their the organizations are able to put together a care package, uh, kind of a ready-made Thanksgiving um, with all the cans and stuffing. Um, and then a lot of organizations, instead of having a frozen turkey donated, which can weigh a lot, uh, they have uh, gift cards. They get Acme, Walmart, whatever gift cards that are able to, you can pick up your frozen turkey there. Um, it's not that people can't afford to eat, it's that people can't afford their electric bill. Um, or they can't afford their mortgage or their car payment or their car insurance and so they choose and your bill collector is going to come after you if you don't pay your car insurance but no one's going to come after you if you skip a meal so that's the choice people are making students at cabrini right now can participate in the helping hands across america food drive that's happening it's all over campus uh, every department's participating in it our goal is to raise a thousand pounds of food to donate to catholic social services in norristown um, i'm hoping that we'll go over that but students can bring uh, cans in, stuffing, any other kind of food. Uh, and on November 21st in the marketplace, there'll be a big weigh-in. And we'll see how much money uh, and how much uh, food we've collected. Uh, and then on the 22nd, we'll donate it over to Norristown. For Location, I'm John Blackwood. Now back to the news desk. Let's see some highlights from the men's basketball game this past Tuesday with Mary Kate McCann. Tuesday, November 15th, the Cabrini College men's basketball team had their first home opener against Haverford College. The first half was a bumpy ride for the Cavs as they are 1 for 12 from the three-point line. But they were able to finish the first half having a 38-32 lead over the Fords. The Cavaliers' shots weren't falling, so they knew they had to change their game and get to the basket in order to score. They finished the second half being 16 for 27 shooting percentage and 12 from 12 from the foul line. Here we have senior Corey Levins driving to the basket as he finishes a short jumper. He led the team with 27 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals. Here we have a breakaway from John Boyd to Fran Rafferty as he finished the game with 16 points while A.J. Williams had 11 and Jeremy Knowles had 10. The final score for the Cabrini Cavs was 77 to 65, taking home the first win of the season. The Cavs will face Newman next weekend for their first away game. Now let's go to Melissa Webb for your entertainment update. Thanks, ladies. There is so much going on as usual. 
Chris Humphreys definitely needs to grow up. The NBA star claims that his soon-to-be ex-wife's famous booty is fake. Justin Bieber doesn't know how to keep his middle fingers down, and Miley Cyrus and Demi Lovato had to defend their weight on Twitter. Love and Hip Hop returned to VH1 with drama this week as Chrissy, the fiance of Jim Jones, jumped across the room attacking Kimbella, the girlfriend of Joelle Santana. According to an interview with MTV, Chrissy says she was caught up in the moment and standing up for her friend Emily and regrets that she allowed Kimbella to pull her out of her character. For all of you Twilight fans, the wait is almost over. Part one of Breaking Dawn hits theaters this weekend. Also check out the American Music Awards this weekend and next week we will definitely have to vote on who was best dressed. Look for more entertainment updates next week. I am Melissa Webb, now back to Leah and Ali. Thanks, Melissa, and that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Leah Fronte. And I'm Ali Judah. Have a great Thanksgiving, Cabrini.